Welcome to the Albuquerque Journal's premier high school sports show, Prep Central, with your host, James Yotis. This show is presented by Western New Mexico University. Hey everyone, I am James Yotis. I am the high school sports editor here at the Albuquerque Journal. Welcome to Preps Central, our high school uh, sports podcast. Uh, week two of the high school football season, a lot to talk about. Matter of fact, we're going to pretty much talk 99% football today. Uh, a couple of notes I have at the end of the show. Um, it, it, was a, uh, it was an interesting first week uh, if we're talking about uh, results, games that didn't get completed, games that didn't even get played. Uh, we're going to get into some of that later. I've got actually a lot to say about uh, I'm trying to think of the best way to say it. The, the lightning issues that we get sometimes here in New Mexico, which happen frequently in the first month of the season. Uh, I've got some things I want to say about that. We're going to get to that a little bit later in the podcast. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to start real quick uh, by introducing our, star, our stars of the week candidate candidates. Uh, we've started this feature again. Uh, and for those of you who are watching, every week we're going to be picking, you know, maybe six, eight, maybe even ten kids out there who had big weeks. Uh, you know, I'm looking for any kind of feedback that you want to give me. Uh, if you go to my social media account at James D. Yotis, you will find my email account on there as well. Um, I'm looking for nominees by five o'clock every Saturday, kids who had great weeks, any level, uh, whether it's six man, eight man, all of the 11 man divisions. Uh, we want to highlight the kids that had the best showings uh, from that particular weekend. Uh, and we're using this feature on Saturday, uh, Saturday for Sunday this year as opposed uh, to Friday for Saturday. So uh, this gives us an extra day to make sure we get as many of the best candidates as we can. So we've got a few. Uh, I want to run down our candidates, and you can vote at abqjournal.com. Uh, and the voting has been ongoing this week. Uh, the leading candidate so far is a sophomore running back from St. Pius, Herschel Alloway Jr. He is a sophomore. He went for over 200 yards in the first half alone uh, on Saturday against West Mesa. He finished, I believe, with 243, his coach told me, plus four scores. Uh, he is receiving 42.8% of the vote as of a couple of hours ago. And I must say, having watched Herschel the other day, and he was injured a good bit of last season, um, as were some of St. Pius's other really young skill position athletes who probably were just not physically ready for varsity football yet. Herschel Alloway is going to be a menace for everybody St. Pius plays. Uh, you know, he had that kind of game against a 6A team. St. Pius is a 4A school. And uh, Landrick Brody, the West Mesa coach, uh, was blown away by this kid when I asked him about Alloway after the game. So Herschel Alloway leading the vote at the moment with almost 43%. Big gay against uh, West Mesa. I want to run down some of the other candidates that we've got on this list. That includes Amiri Mumba the senior running back from Highland. He had close to 300 yards on 26 carries, five touchdowns against Manzano. Uh, Amiri is on the list. Uh, Farmington's new quarterback, Waylon Shockey, uh, replacing the very talented Trell Griego, who graduated. Uh, Shakey had uh, 270 yards, four touchdowns in a win over Clovis. He is on the list. J.J. Ariano, the senior quarterback from Rio Rancho, had a big day against Atrisco Heritage last week. Threw for four touchdowns, ran for another, over 250 yards passing. Big night for him. Uh, Jaden Gutierrez, a slot receiver and a free safety for Lovington. He caught a touchdown pass, had three interceptions in Lovington's win over Hobbs. He is on the list. Cash Ewan, a freshman defensive end from Hope. Five sacks, uh, a scoop and score fumble return. Uh, big day for that freshman for Hope. He is on the list. And Ivan Ruiz from Bernalillo. He's a wide receiver and a free safety. He had a touchdown catch, two picks, nine tackles, and a fumble recovery. So, yeah, we're looking for kids not just on the offensive side. Could be offense or defense. So, uh, as I said, if you have anybody going forward, if you're watching this podcast, spread the news. Uh, if there's a kid out there that maybe we're not readily knowing about, Track me down on social media. Uh, you can find my contact information. Get me their information by Saturday afternoon, and we'll consider them. Uh, so that goes for all classes. So uh, I wanted to get that out of the way first. Let's talk about week one. Um, I, nothing, nothing terribly out of the ordinary, with one exception, uh, among the 6A games. Um, you know, we had Piedra Vista um, beat Sandia 28-7 on opening night last Thursday. That was a result that caught me by surprise. Um, 
you know, San Diego was a four seed in the 6A playoffs last year. Uh, PV, which was in the semifinals in Class 5A last year, was in the championship game in 5A the year before. So uh, Coach Jared Howell's team, I talked to Coach Howell the other day, um, and we chatted about his San Diego victory. You know, Pedro Vista has been up now from 5A to 6A twice. This is their second time. Um, and clearly they have some really good young athletes. Uh, coming up, I don't know. I don't know what this tells us about the rest of their season. They play a good 4A team in Bloomfield this week. We'll talk about that uh, in a bit. Um, but Pedro Vista's win caught my eye. The other, the other win that caught my eye. Actually, I thought that was the most important win of all the 6A teams was Centennial, which came up to Rio Rancho, beat Cleveland 35-28. Uh, the Hawks scored, I believe, with about three minutes to go to take the lead and held on from there. That is a great win for Coach Aaron Ocampo's Hawks. Uh, to, to go up and, and beat Cleveland. You know, we talked about Cleveland last week in the preview show, uh, and one of the questions I had was, how is this defense going to look after dominating everybody they played last year except for La Cueva in the championship game? Cleveland completely throttled everybody else. So uh, one of the questions I had was, how is Cleveland's defense going to uh, transition from last year to this year? Um, look, this is the nature of high school athletics. You know, teams rarely stay the same, and they have to change and, and adjust on the fly. So... You know, Centennial is certainly one of the better teams Cleveland's going to face, but uh, good opening win for uh, Centennial. Um, talking about some of the defending state champions out there, La Cueva, the 6A defending state champion, they won 21 to nothing against Volcano Vista. Uh, that game only lasted two quarters and two minutes uh, because of lightning. We're going to talk about lightning here shortly. Um, the defending 5A champion, Artesia, just swarmed Carlsbad in the Eddy County War game 44 to 7. Um, the defending 4A state champion, of course, is Lovington, who's now a 5A school. Lovington opened with a really impressive win at home over Hobbs, 31-22. Josh Bailey, Lovington's new head coach, uh, great uh, debut for him and for the Wildcats, who clearly have announced they're going to be a factor in 5A going forward, just as they were in 4A. Uh, the defending 3A state champion was St. Mike's. St. Mike's beat Taos, 42 to nothing. Uh, St. Mike's playing without their head coach, Joey Fernandez, uh, who has 191 career wins and could get to 200 before this year is over. He is suspended for the first two games this year. I do not know why I texted Coach Fernandez the other day. The Santa Fe New Mexican was first to report this last week that he was going to be suspended for their first two games. Uh, we do not know for sure why he was, but he is sitting out the first two games. He'll be back, and he could still get to 200 wins before the season is over, but St. Mike's with an impressive win. Texaco, the defending 2A state champion, just crushed one of their biggest rivals, Tex uh, Santa Rosa, 50 to nothing. That is a really impressive opening win for Texaco. You know, Santa Rosa was in the state semis last year, and they played Texaco close twice, once in the regular season and once in the playoffs. So big win for Texaco as well. Uh, other games I wanted to mention, we talked about Piedra Vista, uh, and we talked about Centennial. Um, Portales, which is one of those teams that certainly has a chance to benefit from Lovington's absence in 4A. Portales went on the road, won a game 22-16 at the Wool Bowl in Roswell against Goddard. Um, Goddard is retooling a bit under a new coach, Art Bolaños, who was the former defensive coordinator at Roswell High. So really good road win for, uh, for Portales to open the year. Um, Bernalillo and Valley were 6-6 at halftime the other night in Bernalillo. Bernalillo ended up winning this game 46-6. Um, that result caught my eye quite a bit. Uh, you know, Bernalillo's defense returns a majority of its players. They call themselves the Goon Squad. Um, had some turnovers, a couple of pick sixes in that game as they pulled away from Valley. That is a great opening win for Bernalillo. That's a 4A team over a 5A team. Uh, and I wanted to give a quick shout-out to Cibola, my alma mater. Cibola was on a 15-game losing streak going back to late September of 2022. They lost their last – they started 6-0 and that year, two years ago. Lost their last five, lost all 10 of their games last year. Uh, they beat Albuquerque High 20-17 to in overtime the other night. Uh, so Cibola gets that first win. I'm glad to see that. They, they've had some tough times over the last season and a half, so I wanted to give a, uh, a shout-out to them. Um, now, I want to talk about La Cueva and Volcano Vista for a second because, the, as I said, they only played two quarters and two minutes before Lightning delayed the game and ultimately forced its cancel, you know, the rest of the game to be canceled. There were a few games last weekend and week one that were impacted. Clovis and Farmington 
never even started the other night in Farmington. They waited about an hour. But because Clovis was going to p- spend the night in Farmington, anyway, those two teams came back out and played Saturday morning. Worked out okay for everybody. Uh, the, the only real issue was getting the officiating crew from Durango to come back down for the game in the morning. That worked out okay. Rio Grande and Aztec were supposed to play in the four corners on Friday night. That game never got started. It was canceled. Uh, hard to see. Either one of those teams making up that game. The Four Corners was one of those areas that was hit hard by weather, as was the Albuquerque metro area, Valencia County in particular. Um, we'll talk about the Albuquerque thing in a second, but uh, Valencia and Kirtland Central managed to get a couple of quarters in and a little bit of the third quarter, mostly because they started at 6 o'clock as opposed to everybody else who started at 7. Valencia won that game, but that game got eventually called off early in the third quarter, but it still counts as a win because they played a first half. Uh, Bloomfield was in Belen. They played about seven minutes. Bloomfield was ahead six to nothing. Lightning delayed the game. They never resumed. It goes down as a no contest. Roswell High was in Las Lunas, right up the road, about 10 miles up the road from Belen's stadium. Those two teams played about nine minutes. Uh, it was seven to seven. Lightning came in, delayed the game. They never resumed. It goes down as a no contest. Albuquerque had issues at all three stadiums, Milne, Wilson, and Community. I was out at Community. Um, the game at Community Stadium uh, went into a delay about 8.30. I think by about 9.20 p.m., the officials had decided to call it off with La Cueva getting a 21-0 victory. Uh, Milne had a delay. That game ended up getting finished about 10.15 p.m., the Siebel albuquerque High game that I just referenced. And then there was Highland and Manzano up at Wilson, which had a lengthy delay. Those two played until almost 11 o'clock on Friday night, and this is why I bring this up. <sighs> there is... Uh, and there are a couple of factors that come into play here, obviously. Look, weather from city to city or region to region is not exactly the same. Uh, so it's hard to have one uniform policy that everybody can follow regarding how long you should sit out a delay and when you should call a game, make it official. There, there are so many moving pieces to this. Every school does it differently. Belen which got postponed and ultimately stopped. They do it differently than Las Lunas. Las Lunas does it differently than APS. Everybody has their own method of doing this. It's frustrating, number one, because as I said, the weather isn't necessarily the same everywhere. So you can't necessarily have the same group of rules. I get that. Um, in APS, we had the Quaven Volcano get called at 920. Highland and Manzano were playing till 1055. I don't know why the Quaven Volcano, uh, why officials couldn't have waited out a little bit longer before they decided to pull the plug. It was a Friday night. It was not a school night. It was two local teams. You can afford to play a little bit later. Highland and Manzano did that. Good for them. That's the way it should have been done. Um, I wish La Cueva and Volcano, I wish the officials had waited it out a bit longer and given those teams a chance to play a little bit deeper into the game. The two games in Valencia County are the ones I really wanted to talk about. It is my opinion that not enough is being done to get, these te- to get these games to be official. In other words, you have to play two quarters for a game to be official. Otherwise, there's no result. Uh, it doesn't count. It, Roswell and Las Lunas does not go down as a tie because they only played nine minutes of the first quarter. It doesn't count. It's a no contest. It's like a scrimmage. Bloomfield and Belen, the same thing. Bloomfield doesn't get, count, doesn't get credit for a win but just because they were leading when the rain delay hit. Uh, I do not believe, and if I'm wrong about this and you're listening to my voice and you're hearing this podcast— Come back at me. Let me know what I'm wrong on. Maybe, maybe there's something I'm missing. But it's my opinion that not nearly enough, not nearly enough is being done to make these games official. In the case of Roswell, which drove up here multiple hours, Bloomfield, which drove down here from the four corners for multiple hours, every single thing that can be done should be done to make these games official. And that means two quarters. And I don't think enough is being done on nights like the other night. And you know, look, we all hate the weather. Uh, when the lightning interferes, it's a pain in the butt for all of us. Um, and look, the weather sometimes will not make it possible to play a full 48 minutes. I get that. You wouldn't want fans driving back multiple hours on dark, lightly traveled roads when they're tired. You know, There's a risk in that. I, I'm not talking about that. But I do believe more can be done to get these games to halftime at least, at least make it an official result. And if, in the case of Roswell and Bloomfield, who drove a lot of hours to get here, every opportunity should be made to get this game to halftime, even if it means you end at maybe, maybe you end at 10 or 10.30. That's okay. That's not a, a huge difference from when a 48-minute game ends anyway. 
Uh, I think more can be done to get these games to halftime. You shouldn't just be waving it off at 8.30 or 9 o'clock um, unless, you just, unless you're a skilled meteorologist and you happen to know that there's going to be lightning for the next three hours. Uh, I think more can be done, and I think more should be done to at least try and get these games to halftime. If we're talking about two Albuquerque teams here in the city, okay, uh, on a Friday night, you can, you can do what Manzano and Highland did, and you can wait a little while. You know, good for them. They played. Uh, La Cueva and Volcano Vista, in my opinion, the officials should have waited a while and given them a chance to get back out there. Was there something else at play here that I'm not aware of? Possibly. Don't know. I'm not privy to all the decision-making conversations. I wish I was. I'd love to be a fly on the wall when coaches and game officials and administrators are talking about this. Um, but it's a weird optic. In APS, you have one game called at 920 and another game still being played at 1055. It doesn't work for me. I do not think enough is being done to get these games to be played as long as they can. If we're talking about a school night, a Thursday night, that's one thing. You can't afford to wait too long, especially if you have a visiting team. Even if you have two Albuquerque teams playing at Wilson or Milne or Community, I get it. You can't wait too long because these kids have school. People have work in the morning. On a Friday night, there's no reason that I can think of logically why you can't wait a little bit longer than necessary and get these games at least a halftime. Make it an official result. Um, I don't think that's unreasonable to ask, and I and I absolutely do not think enough is being done in some places to make things like that happen. Um, and I'm talking about Las Lunas, and I'm talking about Belen. Um, I think they could have waited it out a little bit longer uh, before they decided to wave it off. Uh, like I said, if you're if you're from one of these two schools, and maybe you have a piece of information I don't, yeah, let me know. Uh, I'd be glad to hear it. But uh, this is this is something I'd like to see changed. Especially when a team is traveling, give them a chance to get an official result. They had, they spent a good deal of time and energy and expense to come down here. Give them a chance to get a result. Yeah, the home team, no big deal for you. You get to go home and sleep in your own beds. You're ten minutes away. You got to give these teams a chance to play at least two quarters and get an official result. Yeah, we'd love to play a full four quarters. That is not always going to be possible. I get that, um, and we're probably going to run into that again here in week two. From what I heard, forty uh, percent chance of storms throughout Friday, which means we may very well see a bunch more delays and, and postponements and even cancellations in week two. I hope I'm wrong, but, you know, as anybody that follows pro football knows, this is the nature of the beast, and this is what we're dealing with. So uh, I didn't want to get on my high horse about this. I just, you know, to make a long story short, let's try and get these games at least to, to halftime and at least make them official, especially involving teams that are traveling. It could be to Albuquerque. It could be anywhere. It could have been... Las Lunas going to Roswell. It could have been Belen going to Bloomfield. Whatever. Let's try and get these games official if we can. That's that's where I come out on this. I don't think it's a lot to ask on a Friday night. Like I said, on a Thursday night, that's different. On a Friday night, I think more could be done to try and get these games in. Education and training at Western New Mexico University is accessible from every corner of the land of enchantment, providing limitless opportunities for success for more than a century. And now, through the New Mexico Opportunity Scholarship, tuition and fees are covered for anyone looking to start or start over. Along with free tuition, books are always included for every WNMU student, assuring your only worry is how far you can actually go. Lift off toward your future and endless potential at WNMU today. Okay, last uh, bit of business for today. Uh, I tried to keep it a little shorter today. Last week's podcast went a little bit longer than I anticipated. So I'm going to try and make this more uh, fan-friendly this week. Um, I want to talk about some of the Game 2 games that are on my radar this week. First, I want to mention uh, I've started my prep picks again. I went 21-4 and four last week. Actually, a really good week for opening week, which is notoriously difficult to find winners uh, because you just don't know. Coaches don't know. Media don't know. You don't know what you're really going to get from a team until you see them out there. So I went 21-4. and four. Um, I missed on Albuquerque Academy, which lost by a point at Moriarty. They went for two at the end of this game and got stopped. Uh, I lost with Los Alamos. I picked them against Española Valley. Española won that game by three, I believe. I lost with Cleveland, which, uh, as we talked about, uh, they lost by a touchdown to Centennial with a late score. And the big swing and miss for me was Piedra Vista against Sandia. You know, Piedra Vista won by three touchdowns. That was my big miss. Uh, there were actually 28 games on the schedule. Rio Grande and Aztec never got started. Uh, Roswell, Las Lunas, and Bloomfield, Bullen, we've already talked about. There were no results, so uh, those didn't count. Uh, we are going to welcome Adam Deal, who is the voice of New Mexico United. Uh, he also broadcasts uh, many Cleveland High events for Sports Primo. Uh, a lot of you know who Adam is. He's a good guy. He's a buddy of mine. So Adam is going to join me. Uh, starting uh, today for Thursday Morning's Journal. 
uh, as we pick games the rest of the season. So Adam and I, I know we'll have fun. He and I are are, uh, are very jovial and, and competitive with each other, so I think we're going to have fun picking games. So I believe I put 21 games on the schedule this week. I have not actually picked mine yet. Adam has. I haven't seen his picks. Uh, I haven't done mine yet. I will do those when this podcast ends. Um, one game I should mention that is not going to be on this list is La Cueva High playing Pinnacle from the Phoenix area. That game is Saturday in Flagstaff, uh, 5 o'clock start in Arizona, 6 o'clock here in New Mexico. I am going to be traveling out to Flagstaff for that game on Saturday. I'm very excited. Uh, it'll be the first time an APS school has played a game uh, against a school from a neighboring state since 1972, 52 years. Uh, and those are generally El Paso schools. Uh, it is the first time in 46 years that an APS school has played someone outside New Mexico. Valley High School played Chihuahua, Mexico uh, in 77 and 78. I, and, and to be honest, I, I don't know how that series came about. I would love to hear that story, actually. Um, so 1978 was the last time any APS team played somebody uh, – who played high school football outside New Mexico and 52 years since it was a neighboring state. So this is going to be really interesting. Uh, you know, I've had many people over the years write to me or simply say on social media, they really wanted to see how a team like APS, uh, powerhouse, La Cueva might do when they left the state against maybe somebody from a, a, a real powerhouse from West Texas, or maybe someone from the Denver Metro area or someone from the Phoenix Metro area. And here we have pinnacle high. I believe this is going to be their first game. Uh, and they're ranked um, 13th or 14th overall in Arizona. And there's a lot of good high school football in the Phoenix area. So this is going to be a great test. This is probably going to be, as a matter of fact, almost certainly going to be the best team LaCueva plays in the regular season. Um, I, don't think I don't think that's unfair to say. Um, you know, uh, LaCueva doesn't play Las Cruces or Cleveland or Rio Rancho. Uh, or Centennial. Uh, they don't play any of those teams in the regular season. So uh, I'm really interested to see how this game unfolds. I don't know much about Pinnacle. Uh, I am going to be writing in advance on this game for later in the week, uh, so keep reading the journal. I believe I'll have a preview on this game uh, on Saturday morning. Uh, so we'll see. The Cueva is going to be put to the test. Uh, I think everybody's excited. The Bears are excited. I think the coaching staff is excited. Uh, it's fun because it's such an unknown. Uh, you just don't know what you're going to get with a team that's playing their first game. La Cueva has the added benefit of playing a game, in, if you can even call it that, two quarters. Uh, and La Cueva didn't get much work in their scrimmage either, to be honest. Uh, they got like maybe 10 plays and that's it. So La Cueva has not had a lot of, you know, full contact activity in the month of August. So in that sense, the team from Arizona Pinnacle and La Cueva will be closer together than you might think. So uh, I'm excited to see how this, uh, this goes, but that's the game certainly to watch. But as again, this will not be on our picks this week. I do not as a rule want to put, uh, and this is a change I made a couple of years ago. I don't like putting New Mexico teams, uh, picking games when I, we have a New Mexico team playing a team from outside the state. For example, like when Rio Rancho or Cleveland who consistently play teams from El Paso, um, I don't put those on, on my list anymore and will not um, just because there's so much of an unknown with the teams that are playing. You know, we just don't know a lot about them. Um, anyway, other games that I'm circling this week. I will be at Las Cruces and Volcano Vista on Friday night. Las Cruces is going to be up here in the metro area the next two weeks. They play Rio Rancho next week, Volcano this Friday. Uh, you know, Cruces is coming off a big win over Mayfield in week one. Um, not surprising there. Uh, so this, this Las Cruces team, uh, if you want to get a chance to see them, these two weeks, this week and week three, uh, are, the, are your best chance to see them until the playoffs. Uh, so that's going to be another tough test for Volcano, um, which, is, which is retooling. I didn't even think Volcano played all that terribly on defense the other night against La Cueva. They made two stops against La Cueva inside the five-yard line that prevented scores. Uh, they were outmatched, no question, as most teams will be against La Cueva. But Volcano didn't play as bad as the score would indicate. They had a good, promising first drive that stalled at it like the two-yard line. Then they missed a short field goal. So give Volcano some time. I think they're still going to be okay. Uh, we have a rematch of last year's 4A state championship game. Lovington is going up to Portales. Those two have such a tremendous rivalry. Now, of course, Lovington, 5A school. This will be the home opener for Portales, uh, which lost to Lovington twice Last season, um, and two other games I want to mention, too. Bloomfield is playing at Piedra Vista. Of course, Piedra Vista, we talked about them beating Sandia. Bloomfield, this will be their official first game. Uh, they've got a fantastic quarterback in Blake Spencer. Bloomfield is going to be an excellent 4A team. Uh, so we're talking about 4A versus 6A. Uh, we'll see. I mean, we saw, we saw a, uh, a 4A team in St. Pius 
play a 6A team in West Mesa the other day, and St. Pius was leading at halftime and giving West Mesa all kinds of trouble. So it's not out of the realm that, that Bloomfield could do the same to PV. Um, but that's a really interesting matchup in the four corners. And then a game I really, really like. I wish I could see it. it. It was originally scheduled on Friday. Then they moved it to Thursday, and I was going to attend if it was on Thursday. Then they moved it back to Friday, so I won't be able to attend. Uh, is Highland at Bernalillo. Uh, we talked about Amiri Mumba had almost 300 yards in his first game uh, against Manzano. Uh, and that kid's going to blow up this year. I, I wouldn't be surprised if he finishes well over 2,000 for the season. So we've got Highland going to play at Bernalillo. Bernalillo gave itself a nickname, Goon Squad. That's what they call their defense. It's a really good group. Like I said, majority of the starters back. They lost their best player uh, to graduation last year, but almost all their other top kids returned. Uh, and they held Valley to six points. Uh, and Valley, honestly, I think had a little bit more buzz coming into the year than even Highland did. So this is a really interesting game. I'm going to be following this one closely um, as Highland goes into Bernalillo uh, and takes on the Spartans. So, of course, we'll, we'll have plenty of uh, coverage throughout the weekend. Um, and I'm, as I said, I'm looking forward to getting out to Flagstaff on Saturday and watching uh, La Cueva and Pinnacle. Uh, uh, that's about it for today. One last note before I get out. Uh, the Journal this week, me, uh, doing high school soccer previews, metrocentric soccer previews. The boys' soccer preview ran this morning, Wednesday. The girls will run on Friday morning. The cross-country season is underway. Uh, I didn't get a chance to be out at the season opening meet last week at Cleveland. Cody Sullivan of Rio Rancho was the boys' winner, and Gianna Raymer, of course, uh, in her first official race uh, as an El Dorado high school student. Of course, she was at Hoover Middle School last year as an eighth grader. Uh, her, you know, she's a freshman. Uh, she won by almost a minute over Chloe Grieco of St. Mike's. Uh, and Gianna, I think, ran the course this year in 18 minutes and two seconds. For a comparison, she ran this exact same course last year, 18 minutes and 30 seconds. So that's 28 seconds faster for Gianna. Uh, on the same course. So uh, I'll certainly be seeing her quite a bit. I felt bad I had to miss the other day. Um, but uh, cross country is getting going. And volleyball is underway as well. I'll, I'll be previewing volleyball soon, probably not until after Labor Day. But, yeah, as I mentioned, soccer previews going on this week. Boys today, girls later in the week. Everybody's into the Albuquerque Metro Championships. Pool play ends um, tomorrow, Thursday. Uh, of course, as you see, when you see this podcast, it will already be Thursday. Uh, all the pool play games will be finished up. Girls finish Wednesday night today. Boys finish Thursday night. And then we have bracket play next Wednesday, semifinals, next Friday, championship games out at the APS Complex. So I'll be out there covering a, a good bit of soccer next week. So uh, I think that wraps her up. Uh, I appreciate you joining me. Um, and like I said, getting one last thing. If you have something you want to talk to me about regarding the lightning issue that I spoke of earlier, find me on my social media account. My email address is on there, too. Feel free to get a hold of me. If it's, if it's opposite from what I said, I have no problem with that. I don't mind hearing contrarian opinions, um, but I, I wouldn't mind the feedback. I'd be interested to see what other people think out there. So uh, that is it. You can find our podcast uh, on abqjournal.com. Of course, this goes for Jeff Grammer's Lobo Basketball Podcast, Sean Ryder's uh, Lobo Football Podcast. Sean and Jeff are now combining to do some stuff digitally for us on Lobo Football. Uh, you should check that out. Uh, there'll be a lot of interesting uh, dialogue between the two of them as we go forward. Um, you can find us on other platforms as well, like YouTube. Um, so yeah, so check it out, and uh, I will see you again next week. In the meantime, go out and enjoy your football this weekend. Thanks for joining me, and take care. Be safe. Thank you for joining us. You can find this episode and all our podcasts on the Albuquerque Journal website, abqjournal.com, as well as on YouTube, iTunes, Spotify, and SoundCloud. If you enjoy our podcasts, please like and subscribe, and consider becoming a digital subscriber to the Albuquerque Journal to help us continue to bring you more content like this. See the show notes for a discount on a digital subscription. Thank you for supporting the Albuquerque Journal, New Mexico's leading local news source.